have moments in our lives when we feel lost, unsure, and unmotivated. But it's during these times that we need inspiration the most. Good day, everyone. We are here today to present to you the inspirational speech. But first, what is the definition of inspiration? According to the Oxford Dictionary, the word means the process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something, especially to do something creative. According to the gurus of inspirational theory and psychology, Todd M. Thrush and Andrew J. Elliott, inspiration can be further broken down into three parts, transcendence, evocation, and motivation. But first, let's tackle about transcendence. It is a big word that simply means that a person is mentally influenced towards an idea or activity that is greater than one's everyday concerns. Example, a person who is inspired may tell another that talking and speaking is not the best form of communication. Instead, it is through listening that allows us to better understand each other. Second, we have evocation. Evocation means to evoke or to produce something. But the production of emotions or behavioral change in another person cannot be caused by force or direct implementation of one's will. Example, to inspire, your boss would have to say something that would make you want to listen more than talk. Evocation, in other words, causes intrinsic motivation. Number three, motivation. Michael Humphreys and William Revell in 1984 states that there are two things that creates motivation, arousal and effort. Example, to inspire another person, one must first create arousal or interest in the listener. When these three parts come together, inspiration would be able to work its magic. Remember that these three components are not mutually exclusive. They are required to work hand in hand to inspire people. It's an inspirational speech, motivational, persuasive, or both. Well, there are many types of rhetorical speeches, but the one listed highest in the hierarchy is an inspirational speech. Logically, we can persuade without motivating. For example, I can persuade you that going to bed early is better than staying up late all night, but never motivating you to change your sleeping habits. However, the inverse is not true. We cannot motivate without persuasion. I cannot motivate you to sleep early without first persuading you why sleeping early and having enough hours of sleep is so good for your health. In other words, you cannot motivate if the listener does not first believe in your purpose and reasons. To inspire is even more difficult. It requires you to build an emotional connection with the people so that you can make them believe in your words. You have to stand in power. It is not possible without being motivational. And motivation is not possible without being persuasive. Another reason why inspirational speech is ranked highest on the hierarchy of rhetorical speeches is that it let other people see greater and better possibilities. When you try to uplift someone through your words, you can transcend a mind to open a positive view towards that. And if you are able to give them the hope, it will allow us to transform an emotional connection between them. And hope has the power to transform anyone. It also enabled the person to willingly change their beliefs or behavior. When you tell them a story, you have to make it very moving in order to create a change. Through your voice, no matter how simple, if you bring your heart all through the message, we can evoke a certain path of goodness. And lastly, it motivates the person to actually do something because they now believe in what you say. When you make people believe in what you say, you are bringing them a power, a purpose to fuel their hearts to take in action with their passion 
to go beyond their dreams. How do you evaluate the quality of inspirational speech if what inspires one person does not inspire another? This is the hardest question to answer. It is impossible that one speech could inspire every single person. If a speaker inspires smoker to quit smoking, there would be non-smokers who would be unaffected by the speech. If we were to evaluate the quality of an inspirational speech, we should ask instead of the speech is structured to cause a high level of emotional change in the audience. In other words, crying, laughing, awe, or admiration. And whether or not the speech has the potential to cause behavioral change. In this video, we have dealt specifically with the definition of an inspirational speech. And we also have outlined three important points. First, an inspirational speech is the product of three things. Transcendence, evocation, and motivation. Second, an inspirational speech is ranked highest on the hierarchy of rhetorical speeches. And third, an inspirational speech is structured to create a high level of emotional elevation and also has the potential to create behavioral change. Now, with these definitions in mind, I hope that you would now have a greater awareness on what constitutes as inspirational. Remember to always aspire to inspire before we expire. Thank you and have a great day.